Welcome, 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 welcome. It is July. No, not July. It's June. Oh my God. It's Friday, June 19th, 2015. And you're listening to Super Organizer Universe Radio. I am James Lodge, the Super Organizer. Good morning and welcome. Uh, you know, Super Organizer Universe Radio actually spells out sour. Isn't that funny? But, you know, organizing isn't sour, it's sweet. That's right. There's your corn for this morning. A little corn for your breakfast. That's right. Mm-hmm. Well, welcome today. I'm glad you're here. As always, I'd like to say good morning to my engineer, Brian. Good morning. How are you doing today? I am not good. <laughs> not just kidding. I'm good. <laughs> you know, allergies are, are, are a bad thing. Allergies. I have year-round allergies, so Oof. I don't catch a break ever. But Yikes. it does flare up a lot worse in... The summer and the springtime. Yeah, that's kind of crazy. But you'll be good today. You'll be good. Uh, well, I'm, I'm ready to be sour. You're ready to be sour. That's right. Oh, I like that, actually. I'll be sweet. you be sour. And with me today, I actually have a guest in studio. And as I told you, um, guys, if you're following me, it's an all-male review. Yes, all men this hour. So get excited. I'm very excited myself. And with me is a comedian, host, and dreamboat. Frank Moran. Yes. Good morning. Oh, good morning, James. All right. Yes. Finally, I get that uh, credit that I so richly deserve. Yes. I thought you deserved that this morning. I really Thank did. You. Thank you. Know, you. you know, I think it is deserved. So he'll be with us this hour. We'll talk to him a little more later about exactly what he is doing. Of course, he's doing lots of good things. But as I usually do, I'd like to start out with thanks and gratitude. But actually, before I even do that, I just want to give a little disclaimer for you guys out there because you can't see me, but I have new glasses. And I was just telling Frank about this. And the, um, I call them trifocals because they're for reading, distance, and up close, and just seeing in general. But two days ago, I went to the doctor, the eye doctor. She said they're called multifocal progressives. I said, that sounds fancy, but that means I'm blind. So basically, my eyes are adjusting. So, Frank, you wear glasses. Any, anything there? Have you, have you done anything like that? Or no? no, I mean, I guess I've, I've never gone down the bifocal rod. I've been blessed to be able to just to have just the one focal on there. So it's been great. I've never had to worry about my eyes adjusting as I'm looking up or down, yeah. thankfully. You are unifocal. Yeah. Is oh. that a word? I, I think it's a word now. I think it's, it's a word now. Yes. I'm, I am making words happen. That's right. I love the English language, right? Unifocal. That's it. That's today's word. Yes. Make it happen out there, people. Yes. So just so I'm trying. I have talking points and questions, but my eyes are adjusting, so bear with me if anything happens, any gaps. Anyway, so thanks and gratitude. I always believe in um, living in gratitude every day and giving thanks to people who help me along the way. It takes a village to raise me. <laughs> Trust me. And I think saying thank you to people every once in a while is good. So I'm going to start out with Monica and Tammy. They are the best girls a brother slash Papa Jamie could ever have. They have turned into wonderful young women who I had a chance to um, co-raise. And it makes me so happy to see them taking care of their business. How many people can say that? I love that. Two wonderful women. I love you guys. My cousin, Maya Lott. She has been so instrumental on my artistry side. Uh, she has reinvigorated my my lust for art, and I've been painting, writing. It's just been wonderful. She's so talented in her own right. She's been in the business for years, and I just want to give her a shout-out. Thanks, Maya. Lisa Kelly Woodruff. She started the Professional Organizers Think Tank on Facebook, and I joined it about eight months ago. And it is a wonderful resource for newbies, for seasoned professionals like myself. It's a safe space for us to go to talk share ideas, vent. It's, been, it's a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful page and resource. I've learned so much stuff on there that even I didn't know. The learning never stops. That's one of the lessons I'm learning as I get older. The learning never stops. If it does, then I'm sorry for you. She also has a great podcast, and I'm actually going to have her on the show at some point. We're talking about that now because I think you all need to meet her. Dr. Lori Martin. She is one of my clients. We've been together about two and a half years. She has given me more referrals and more new clients than anyone else in my client list. 
she says my name, she passes out my cards, and I am grateful because many of you know in all business, in all areas, it's who you know. If they like you, you want them to say your name. 70% of my business is word of mouth. I, I, just, I mean, I advertise and everything, but word of mouth, it is so crucial to my business and many people's businesses. And I thank Lori Martin all the time. So thanks, Dr. Lori. Ronique Kranzberg. She is a fellow organizer, and she's in the Valley. And I'm here in, you know, I'm based in, like, L.A. proper, in the South Bay area, L.A. And she and I kind of formed a loose partnership where if one of us can't get to the other and a client's out in the Valley, I send them to her. If she can't get to Maria Del Rey, she sends them to me. And I think partnerships are very important because there's no competition. There's enough work for everyone. And there are things that she brings to the table that I don't. There's things that I bring to the table that she doesn't. And it works out beautifully. I just want to say thank you to her for all her support and just being a wonderful organizer. And then lastly, but of course, it's not the least. All of you listeners out there who have been commenting and retweeting and sharing and just listening. Thank you so much. I really, really appreciate it. This is a dream realized. I always say that. And dreams realized, you should always live in gratitude. So those are my thanks and gratitude for this morning. Thank you very much. So you have anybody you want to say thank you or any gratitude, Frank, that you want to say to? Ooh, uh, you know, I, I would like to say uh, uh, thank you for uh, to Kara Barlow. She's just a, a casting director and a teacher that uh, I've been working with the past three weeks, and she's been very uh, inspirational. I guess uh, when you're mm-hmm. pursuing hosting careers, sometimes uh, you kind of find like, well, there's so many other great hosts out there. Mm-hmm. I mean, what do I have to offer that nobody else can do? And so she's been great to just no, focus on you. Focus on you. You've got a unique voice, and uh, let's get it out there. So, Wow. Carol. Yes. Go, Carol. We like that. Encouragement is the best. We all need it. So I'm going to go into um, tips. I like to give tips because this is an organizing show. And I want to give some tips to you guys out there. But I want to revisit just briefly, last week I gave a tip to all of you. I invited you to welcome change into your life. And I actually invited you to do an exercise for a week. That was every morning, stand in front of the mirror and say, I welcome change to my life five times. And do it for a week. So those of you who have done it and have told me that you've done it, congratulations. That's great. Hopefully you believe it now. And those of you who haven't, it's fine. You can always start today. You can start tomorrow. It's an open-ended invitation to welcoming change into your life because change is going to happen anyway. And like I said last time, wouldn't it be better to ride the wave than fight against it? So I just want to bring that up. And now going to the, we're going to go even a little further with two quick tips. And one is, I call it five steps to assessing an organized issue. Basically, when you have an issue with organization or disorganization, these are five things you should do to get started. First, you want to gather information. This is which is basically exactly what it is. So what is the area that's disorganized, right? That's where you want to start there first. What area is disorganized? How big is it? How large is the area? I mean, just basic information. Number two, to define the problem areas. So maybe it's your kitchen. Maybe it's that side of the bed I talked about last week. (laughs) Maybe it's the closet. I always say, like, the linen closets. Linen closets, a lot of times, become more than just for linen. They become catch-alls in true frank. Absolutely. I've got, if you look at my linen closet right now, I think we see, I see an iron. Uh, <laughs> we see an air mattress inside there. Yep. Uh, a variety of things. Batteries. I, I saw one where it was like, there was paint. Yep. You know, just whatever. They, they kind of, they're kind of catch-alls for stuff. So you want to define the problem areas. Because it's very important because you're going to gather information and you're going to define the areas that actually need the organization. Number three is to determine the needs and wants. Now, this one is also very um, self-explanatory. What are your needs? What are your wants? I want a nice linen closet filled with just linens that I can access. Make it simple. It doesn't be complicated. Just make it really simple. I want that side of the bed clear and all of that stuff put in its rightful place. Very clear. Just, like, define what you want and what you need. Or I want a kitchen that works for left-handed people. 
I was in one once. I'm left-handed. I was in the kitchen, and I remember moving my cousin Bobby in, and she was like, everything looks so weird the way it's set up. And I'm like, it's perfect. It feels great for me. And I'm like, oh, it's a left-handed kitchen because people who lived there were left-handed. You can have whatever you want, right? It's your house. Number four, to talk about the cause of the problem area. See, here's the deal. We talked about this a little bit last week. When you have to make the commitment to organize and then the commitment to stay organized. The second one is more important than the first, right? You get organized. It's all pretty and beautiful. And then what happens after that? Does it go back? The slow, the slow inevitable <laughs> decline. Yes. yes. So you've got to stay on it. So this is like a good portion for you to stop and think, why am I doing this? How is this happening? Because like we said last time, a lot of times things don't happen overnight. It just happen over time. And is it because you're super busy and you're just like, this chair is right here. I'm going to throw it right there. You have to really look at why this organization has happened in that area and also why it's not meeting the needs and wants that you have. And number five, of course, this is actually the part that you have to get started. It's to create and plan a strategy. So now you, you, know, you just determine why it's happening. You found the area. You know what you want. Now you got to let that happen. Now, sometimes you might need a professional organizer to help you do that. Sometimes the plan comes up on your own, like you already have an idea and you just haven't done it. So now it goes back to that commitment of doing it. So, and you have to make sure you make a plan. This is my suggestion. It doesn't have to be really big. You can start small. Small is good. It's fine. You have to make some big grand plan. I'm going to do the whole house all weekend. Uh, no. I'm going to take care of that chair this weekend. I'm going to clean off that bed this weekend. Like, just, you can start small. It's okay. But create a plan. I'm going to wake up at this time. I'm going to have my breakfast. I'm going to have my coffee. For those of you who drink coffee, it's been eight months for me. I miss coffee so much. Anyway, I digress. Have that coffee. And then you're like, I'm going to go in the room, and I'm going to take everything off that bed and put them in the pot. You know, like just, there's just plans, there's strategies, there's things to do. And that's like the last thing you need to do before you actually begin the process. So I'm going to say these, these uh, five one more time. They are one, to gather information. Two, to define problem areas. Three, to determine needs and wants. Four, to talk about the cause of the problem areas. And five, to plan, create a plan or strategy. Um, these are just great things to start when you want to get into the process of actually organizing because you made the commitment and you're ready to do it and you want it. So that's like, to me, that's the next step when you're assessing an issue. And like I said, start small. It's okay. It doesn't have to be big. Then after that, here's an example of something that, uh, I think is really very interesting. And for me, living in LA is expensive. It's gotten more expensive. Absolutely. And I came from San Francisco, where it's one of the most expensive cities in the, in the country. It's getting expensive here. So every penny that comes into my house or into my life, I know where it goes. So this is something that's very important. I'm going to – this tip – I mean, trust me. This is so true. Being cluttered is emptying your bank account. Think about that for a second. Here's an example. I can't find those light bulbs I need to change the light bulbs in the house. I have three lights out. I know they're here somewhere, but they're not not there anymore. And you're looking around, so you're wasting time, first of all, because you're trying to find them. So you're losing time. I can't find them. I kind of would have swore I had them. They were right here the other day. Well, never mind. I'll just go to the store and buy some. You go to the store. They're eight ninety nine, twenty four ninety nine, wherever you go to Lowe's, Home Depot, wherever you go, you get all, you get you get your things. You come home, you change the light bulbs. It's almost like magic. It could be an hour later, or later that night, or even the next day, and suddenly, magically appearing are those light bulbs that you had in your house. Like wow, there they are, and sometimes they're in plain sight. You're like I, I thought I looked there. The point is, you just spent. 30 bucks on light bulbs, and you already had them in the house. That 30 bucks could have went to something else. That 30 bucks could have stayed in your bank account. You know what I mean? Being cluttered when you can't find stuff, it costs you money. I can't find the batteries. I can't find, 
I can't find that shirt. I mean, it could be anything. I bought a shirt specifically for that event, and I can't find it. Uh, so these are two tips that really, really, I think, are very important to remember. You can find both these tips, actually, on my blog, thesuperorganizeruniverse.com. And they're actually featured today on my Facebook page, which is, I think we determined it's forward slash the Super Organizer. This is James Law Jr., the Super Organizer, and we'll be back with Super Organizer Universe Radio. <laughs> Patty Sharkey of Sharkey HR Radio, where we're putting human back into resources. Every Tuesday here at AdrenalineRadio.com between 11 and 12 p.m. I know the workplace can be kind of scary, but we're hoping that this is a safe environment to call in your questions. You don't even have to say your real name. How fabulous is that? So give me a call or email me at SharkeyHR at iCloud.com. And I'd love to help you start to understand the workplace maybe just a little bit better. I'm here to listen to your questions and hopefully help you go through the system tuesdays 11 to 12 on adrenalineradio.com and i really hope to hear from you thanks so much you might know me i'm 50 cent you may follow my tweets my facebook friends odds are a few in six degrees separate us we're that close what's crazy is one in six don't know where their next meal is coming from these are your co-workers your neighbors your friends hunger is too close for us to ignore so visit feedinamerica.org slash hunger and find your local food bank to see how you can make a difference. From one close friend to another, let's do this. I'm 50 Cent, and together we are Feeding America. A message from Feeding America and the Ad Council. Thanks for asking, but I'd rather not send you nude pictures. I'm camera shy. I already said no. Under my clothes, I'm a robot. My webcam is broken. I'm worried they'll get passed around school. I have a rash. I have nudophobia. I have lizard skin. I'm a vampire, so I don't show up in pictures anyways. Your badgering has really killed the mood. When someone is pressuring you to do something you don't want to, how many ways can you say no before they get the message? Let us know at that's not cool.com. Brought to you by the Ad Council. When gardening is part of your life, it brings so much. Healthy eating, the freshest, most local produce, and playing in the dirt. At BonniePlants.com, you'll find all you need to succeed. When you grow Bonnie veggie and herb plants in beds or containers, you'll know where your food comes from. Homegrown veggies and herbs ready for cooking, eating, and enjoying. And you did it. So get growing with Bonnie Plants. Hard at work for over 60 years, DRAM watering tools have been the professional's choice for quality and durability. Now you can create the softest shower of rain. Nine water patterns for a variety of uses. Or a lush green playground. Quality you can depend on for a lifetime. DRAM, the professional's choice for lawn and garden. Available at a fine garden center near you. We are back. This is Super Organizer Universe Radio. I'm James Bud Jr., the Super Organizer. Yes, the Super Organizer. And you're back. And we're here with Frank Moran. Hi, Hi. Frank. Hi, James. How are you? Thanks for coming on to the show. Thanks and for having me. So now we're going to ask you some questions. Put me on the hot seat. Yeah, find out who you are. So where would you come from? Who are you? I am from uh, Lockport, Illinois. It's Ooh. a town next to Joliet. Okay. Uh, so it's probably 40 minutes southwest of Chicago. Ooh, so how is it the difference between Midwest and here for you? Uh, I love it out here, okay. absolutely. That's the whole reason I wanted to come out. My my lofty goal when I first moved out here was to be able to wear shorts year round, <laughs> and, like, and I do just about. I really do. My friends know. Yeah, it's only if I'm actually just required because of my job or anything that I have to wear pants. Otherwise, I would be shorts twenty four seven. I love it. Uh, that's, that's one thing about great being living in Los Angeles. So, what do you do? Uh, I, I came out originally as a uh, television producer, and then I uh, mm-hmm. sort of got, got more involved in comedy, and then uh, now hosting stuff. It's funny. Um, so, for the listeners out there, I uh, did a casting out for a project that I'm working on with After Buzz TV, one of my other things I do. And he came across my my emails, and I got to see his hosting reel. And when I saw your hosting reel, I was like, "This guy." I told you this before, but I was like, "This guy can handle any situation." Because you had a wide variety of people that you've worked with and on camera. Can you tell me, is there a hosting gig that really stands out for you in a 
interesting way. You know, what I love to do more than anything is the uh, the man on the street stuff and yeah. to be able to interact with just everyday people and, and just their their environment and learn just about them and why they're there. So especially the uh, the Indy 500. Oh, that was one thing I loved there. <laughs> uh, I had heard – everybody hears about the Indy 500, but uh, 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 my girlfriend is a big auto enthusiast. Oh, really? Really big into Indy 500. So wow. she uh, – surprisingly, she wanted to go, and she'd been there a few times with her parents, and I finally said, like, oh, all right, I'll check it out. And just fell in love with all, like I guess, like the pre gaming and all oh, that yeah, stuff. Yeah, just yes, yes, all the rituals and everything that everybody would do for that. And so then the following year, I, I decided to bring my camera down because I said, I just want to talk to these people. These yeah. people are just <laughs> phenomenal. <laughs> they have so many different stories and so many different philosophies about how they do the things that they do to get ready for the race. Right. They are fantastic. You know, I go to Midwest a lot because I have cousins in Ohio, Indiana, and I love the Midwest actually because the pre gaming is. The word phenomenal is like not even the right way to even describe it enough. It, it is huge. Absolutely. I mean, the, the fact that people get out there for – because you think like for a football game, they might just get out there like early that morning to right. get out there. But here for the Indy 500, they're out for a leak, at least a week or maybe even a little <laughs> bit more just camping out right there in the parking lot across oh from the God. stadium. And where they even bring in a, a mobile shower oh where you can God. just pay to pay like $5 and then go in and just shower. And it's like a huge, big <laughs> – uh, Semi truck cab in there, but it's all just different shower units inside. <laughs> wow, I never knew that. That's that. that's good. They really up their game, don't they? Yeah. Wow, that's funny. Is there one hosting gig that stands out for you that is just one of your favorites besides Indy Five Hundred? There's one that just like you look think back and you're like that was a really good gig. Well, mine. It, I'm a big comic book lover, so yes. it, uh, the chance to go to Comic Con and and talk to all oh. the, the fans down there and the people who cosplay. Oh, okay. I I love doing that just because those are those are fans that are just so passionate about that medium and yeah. and about these different characters and these different uh, franchises and they just want to celebrate that and wow. the way how they celebrate that is just always interesting whether it's trying to be, create a, a really faithful re- recreation of somebody's mm-hmm. uh, costume right. or whether it's just trying to do it, their version of on on the on the budge kind uh, of version yes. of a character <laughs> or if they want to just combine uh, franchises like the Elvis Stormtrooper or what? yes or. <laughs> You know, the, the punk rock Harry Potter or something like that, where they just take two different franchises and start kind of mashing them together. Oh, that's hilarious. Yeah. I never, never even knew that. That's, that's hilarious. I like that. And I'm thinking of my own right now. I'm trying to think of my own. Like a Darth Vader meets, like, uh, General Hospital. I yeah. don't know. Find something like that. <laughs> There's a great Boba Fett guy oh. that walks around with a, a leisure suit on and holding, like, a like almost like Dean Martin, just kind of around this little, <laughs> this little glass of whiskey there right, that he's walking around. And so he's just got, I'll just, he's got the helmet, the, the leisure suit, oh, and I a little glass it. of whiskey. And he's just kind of sauntering around. And I've seen him there multiple love years. It. I love it that's the way what is your what well, do you have a favorite comic you know i uh You're just a general lover uh, i'm a general lover but my making guy is superman i mean that's oh, okay. yes okay. I, there's just something that's so aspirational about him that uh, i mean he just he's he's he wants the best it's uh, you know do good for yourself and do good for others and uh, the mm-hmm. world will be a better place i like that yes all right so um time management because you uh are a producer and stuff how do you handle your time management on a project Oof. Are you good? I, I feel like on a on a project I'm good. In my personal life I'm probably <laughs> worse. I feel like if you know if I'm if I'm working for somebody else, boy, yeah, yeah then I, I can crack the whip and I know how to get things done on a mm-hmm. timeline. Uh, certainly the uh, the I, if I'm left to my own devices on on certain shows where it's just me responsible for delivering the whole product, right? Uh, I I will certainly be a little bit more fast and loose with my schedule, trying okay. to work things around in my personal life as well. Yeah. But if it's more of a regimented, all right, I'm working with a team of people, oh, okay. and we need to we need to move all the camera guys, we need to move all the crew, we need to be at these different locations. Yeah. Then it, it's it, because it's not just it's not just me. I mean, mm-hmm. these are all the, the whole crew that I got to be responsible for, and uh, a, a network in a production company. Right. So I can't be just like ah, well, maybe I'll <laughs> maybe I'll come in a little later so I can go do this uh, this audition or do this class real quick. You know, because I know it's just me, and I can edit this stuff later, and I can work all night uh, and make up for it. Oh, got it. Yeah. Right. So I can't I, I can't. Uh, I can't be as free and loose with the mm-hmm. schedule. I've got to be responsible for all these other people as well. Mm-hmm. So at home, you mentioned at home. So who runs the house at home? Yeah, I think our two and a half year old. <laughs> that all you parents out there, you know that. Yeah, you, you totally know that. Yes. As you're going through your your five your your, your five rules right there, yeah. uh, I was just like, oh, yeah, I could. I, the source of my problems, my two and a half year old. <laughs> uh, the source of devastation is every she where everywhere she goes. It's just the source of the clutter right there. It's. I mean, before she came along, I mean, not necessarily that we were the, the most. Uh, we we did get in, we did have our situations with clutter, but right. 
you know, I just like with a two and a half year old, there is just there's something about like your your clutter, and then there's something about a two and a half year old that you don't really have control of that just like making this clutter around you. You're like, oh, why are you doing this? Why are you doing this? <laughs> and, and no, ra- you can't rationalize with her and realize that like, you no. should clean up after yourself. Right, right. Please, <laughs> I beg you. I please, I beg you. Like, come on, you're two. I know you're two years old, but yes. come on, girl. Yeah, right. <laughs> you can't, you can't do that. It's somebody. So, well, then with that, I mean, who's the one who kind of will first pick up stuff? Kind of. I, I think it's it's it'll be me because yeah. I'll reach that breaking point. Like we've got to do it. Yeah, I think if we look back, uh, that I've been the one that has done the major amount of cleaning. Yeah. Which certainly, uh, uh, Erica, my girlfriend, she, I, you know, the energy just to maintain yeah. and yes. just run, yes. and, uh, you know, just it's not uh, easy. Yeah, it's just yeah. for a two and a half year old. So there are times where she'll just she's exhausted and she can't do it. And she's like, I don't have the energy yeah. to to stop her from. Opening up the the drawer and pulling out all the plastic mm-hmm. bags, and then you w- walk home. There's plastic bags just everywhere, scattered. You're like, yes. oh, I just didn't have the energy, and it's like, I, and I can't, I can't falter. I mean, because it no. is, it is tiring work. But mm-hmm. they reach a point now, like today, there are just books just strewn <laughs> all over our living room, and little bits of puzzles and toys and figures all over. And it's just you can't walk, you can't walk without stepping on something. Yes, I know that. So one. it's like I know when I get home tonight, I'm like, ah, oh, I got to because I can't. I well, can't. you know, I told I had a I have a client who's a stay at home mom. I have several and. I talk about that. It's like stay-at-home mom is such a misnomer. It's like it's kind of like you're a house runner. Especially when you have small children, when you're small children, you're doing more than just staying at home. I mean, you're like, I mean, it's a lot of energy that goes out. So I always shout out to all the, the moms out there who are, you know, and the moms who work also and come home to plastic everywhere. It's like it's not, it's just not easy. And it should be no shame in that whatsoever, as long as you and if you have a partner or you and your kids work out a system. Yeah, I mean, because it's the toughest thing to, to – to, how much do you want to just keep saying no and try to control it? Right. And then yeah. it, it has to deal with the crying, and then right. how much, at what point do you reach that level where you're like, all right, fine, just tear everything <laughs> apart <laughs> just because <laughs> you're going to be busy and you're not going to be crying. That's fine. <laughs> well, actually, that leads me to something because, uh, you know, Christmas time, the kids get toys, and I'm not good at putting stuff together. Are you the one who puts things together for yeah. the kids' stuff? Absolutely, and I love it. Oh, you do? Okay. Uh, I, I love assembling stuff. Oh, okay. That's, okay. Yeah, so uh, I, in fact, we just bought her her big girl bed. She used to have a crib, Ooh, and now she's okay. got her first big Yay. girl bed. And so yeah. that was my next project. We got just went to Ikea, just got a little you yeah. know, little bed there for her. But I just spent the day assembling it. Love doing it. I, anything, wow. I, Any chance I get it to, to build something... I, I really dig it. Oh, that's good. I, I, for me, I let the women in the family do it. I'm like, okay, you do it. I get a glass. <laughs> I get a whiskey on the rocks, and I sit there at, at Christmas Eve, and my girl Tammy, I let her put all the stuff together. I was like, <laughs> you're doing a good job. I supervise. In, in fact, there was a shopping cart that my uh, my dad had gotten her for a gift, and it had been sitting in the box, and she finally like, I want this. I want, I want to play with this. I want to play with this. And I'd always like, I'll, I'll do it. I'll do it. And I came home a couple days ago, and Eric had built it. Oh. And, and there's part of me that was like, kind of like, Pumped. I wanted to build that. I really wanted to build that. But you didn't do it in time. I didn't. I, so I, I had six months. I could have easily done that. And I didn't. That is that is on me, so I can't feel bad. But I was like, part of me was like, oh man. All right. She wanted it now. Yes. And so you lost out. I did. That's so funny. So are you a collector of anything? <laughs> uh, as Erica would tell you, I'm a collector of too many things. Oh, there we go, yes. kids. There we go. Uh, I, 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 if, uh, comic books. Okay. Uh, comic books, action figures, uh, artwork, and uh, T-shirts. I t-shirt, love okay. graphic T-shirts. Me too. Me oh, too. Big fan. Yes. So I've got way. I probably, honestly, could go like two, maybe three years without ever wearing the same shirt twice. <laughs> yeah, I love it. So now, are you guys living in a larger space, smaller space? We're living in a. In a uh, I guess it's a condo, but it seems like a townhouse to me. It's a two-story okay. level there. So I think we're dealing with about uh, seventeen hundred square oh, okay. feet. Okay. So it's, it's certainly the biggest place that we've been in. Okay. The place that we were in previously before this was about eleven hundred. Okay. So. Okay. But surprisingly, I mean that that extra six hundred can fill. <laughs> I can fi- I can fill a, I can fill six hundred square feet very quickly. Now, isn't that funny? So all you listeners out there, I know many of you, I'm sure, can relate. And that's what it is. Sometimes we f- we find ourselves filling the space to fill the space, so to speak. Like you know, we get I get a bigger house, I'm gonna get a bigger place, and somehow it becomes smaller again. Absolutely, that's where it's <laughs> like, oh, we've got all this room now. Boom! It just starts filling all up again. And as you're talking about that, that money uh, you spend a lot of money just dealing with all the clutter it can cost you. I one thing just in terms of the light bulbs, trying to find that stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, but also just the issue when it gets too cluttered, you end up getting storage space. 
and you yes. put stuff into storage space. Good point. And then th- that's just money that's being drained out of your account there because stuff in storage that you may not even see like hardly ever, but you're not getting rid of it, but it's still just weighing down on your bank account. And it's like you go, well, it's only 30 bucks a month, but 30 bucks a month times 12. Yeah. That's still a chunk of money. And you bring it, that's a great point. Actually, I'm going to talk about storage units later on in another show because that's, that's, that's a really good point. Thanks, Frank. So, Frank will be back a little later. We'll talk to him a little more. But coming yeah. back after the break, it's the organized guy. And I feel like he's a superhero. And he probably is to his clients out in Long Island. I hope he wears a cape. I, 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 should, I should wear a cape, too. I'm the super organizer, right? <laughs> Speaking of super. Uh, and his name is uh, Vini Giacalone. So, he'll be back after the break. The Super Organizer Universe Radio. Hey, this is Flea from the Red Hot Chili Peppers for Rad. I'm here to remind you that drunk drivers are still a major killer of young adults in this country. So always choose a designated driver. And remember, music lives, you should too. Getting on in the state of Mississippi. Papa was a copper and a mama was a hippie. A public service message brought to you by the U.S. Department of Transportation, Rad, the National Association of Broadcasters, and the Ad Council. Hi, everyone. This is Chuck Harold with my co-host, Oh, Tally Ho, Bristol. From Security Guy Radio. Regard is a verb, not a noun. Every Monday night at 7 p.m., we challenge the conventional wisdom of the security industry with our plain talk experience, humorous stories, and answers from the top security experts in the field. Tune in each week for the latest security news, lightning interviews, and a look at a featured security gadget or service. Join us on the web at securityguyradio.com. And listen every Monday night at 7 p.m. exclusively on Adrenaline Radio. What up, Cool World? I'm Zion. And I'm Leland from the band Blue Noise. To discover new artists, musicians, and more, listen to In Transit Radio Live every Wednesday at 1 p.m. on Adrenaline Radio. And IntransitRadioLA.com. Support, Support local, local talent. Artists. Oh, talent. That's it. Do you love leather? Do you own a piece of fine leather furniture? Do you love the way it feels when you sit in it? Do you want to keep it that way? Because my name is Chris Lawler, and I own Leather Care Services. I'm in the business of restoring and maintaining leather furniture so that you love it as much in 10 years as you did the day that you bought it. Call me at area code 562-693-7676. Remember, Leather Care Services, saving cows one hide at a time. While cutting molding with a 12-inch dual compound miter saw, while holding a newborn baby in your arms... When face-to-face with a congregation of alligators, with the ball in your hands and the entire freaking season on the line. There are a million places you'd never consider texting. So why would you do it while driving? NASCAR driver Casey Kane here, asking you to please stop the text. And together, we can stop the wrecks. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. Get the message at stoptextstoprex.org. And we are back. This is Super Organized Universe Radio. I'm James Lodge Jr., the Super Organizer. And my next guest, I'm very excited because uh, it's another male in the industry. And I just this makes me happy when I meet others, that are other men in the industry. He's the organized guy. I feel like he and I should be like superhero teams. I'm super organized. He's an organized guy. And he's from Long Island. It's Vinny Giacalone. Hey, how you doing, James? Good. How are you? I'm doing excellent today. Thank you. I'm glad. I know that you're you're busy there on the East Coast working it out. Thanks for calling in. No, absolutely. Not a problem. Thanks for having me on. I really appreciate it. Now, did I say your name correctly? Yes, you did. I practiced it like 10 times. I was like, <laughs> come on, James. You can do it. Don't mess up his hey. name. Come on. You did a great job. Thank you. So how are you? I'm doing very well. Keeping busy. How are you doing today? Good. So tell the viewers where you are from. Uh, I'm actually located in uh, Massapequa on Long Island, which is uh, in Nassau County, if you know the Long Island map. Mm-hmm. And that's where my home base is, but uh, I just generally cover all parts of Long Island. Wow. So do you, do you ever go into the city at all or no? Or any other boroughs? Or just basically Long Island? I, I haven't been yet, uh, but I, I do get, sometimes I get, do get leads from the city. So uh, it's not off the plate, but I just haven't gotten there yet. How long have you been doing organizing? How long? How long? Yeah, it's been. I'm actually celebrating a year. 
Congratulations. Offic- officially as a business, but I've been organizing all my life. Oh, yeah, but, right. you know, as a year, it's been a year as officially as a business. As most of us. You bring up a good point because many organizers talk about how we come into this profession and it leads it's who we are, basically. One of those few professions right. where you take who you are. So you're saying growing up, was your room always organized? Did you have, you, you have collections? Or like, were you always like a person, everything's in order? Yeah, I was a little bit of the oddball. So, you know, <laughs> it was always getting little jokes and, uh, and, and, and pokes from my friends and family, but... It's just been ingrained in my DNA. I love it. Did your family keep a, a keep an orderly house? Yeah, well, at least I did. <laughs> my, my section of the house in my room growing up was always pretty orderly. So, did you? Uh, you have siblings? Yeah, I have one younger brother. Okay, because like, like for me, I had to share a room, and I always say that uh, my bunk bed area, the wall that I had, was always everything was like you know immaculate. Right. You know, I didn't have to share a room, but my room versus my brother's was very different. So what were you doing before you got into organizing? I I actually worked for a consulting company for uh, quite a few years. And in some ways, uh, it it kind of delved into what I was doing since I was, I worked for, what's that? No, I'm listening to you. No, nothing happened. Oh, okay. Um, So I worked for a consulting company, and we represented various manufacturers and other uh, other, um, retailers. I happened to work for a major uh, manufacturer, and uh, I worked on their behalf for, at the retailers, analyzing sales POS. But I also, I also did work where I did visual merchandising, so it oh, kind of wow. spoke to organizing the shelf. It does. I used to do, I've done uh, merchandising for a couple of uh, retail companies, so I do. Yeah, that's I, very I, true. I did work for the Home Depot and, and uh, also for Lowe's, Ace oh. Hardware, and quite a few other smaller retailers across the country i used to travel pretty extensively too wow so then how do you go from that to starting your own organizing business uh james it's a that's a a good question uh i actually started looking into organizing a few years ago uh because you know doing what i was doing was starting to run its course there really wasn't any opportunity for me to grow i was with a small company i reported to the president and they didn't really offer any opportunity so you know i started looking into this as a viable business and, and really what i started to learn was was quite fascinating, um, but you know, among other things, besides the fact that it was a viable industry to get involved in, was the fact that it was, it's dominated by women, and, and understandably mm-hmm. so. Right. So, but I did see the opportunity in doing that as a man. Yeah, the same for me. That's how I, I came from corporate background and got into this. Mm-hmm. I was like, "There's a lot of women here. Like, where are the other guys? There's a few. There's a, there's some of us out there. You know, like, <laughs> and here of, I am. And here you are. Here you are. I love it. Yeah. And so, how do you stand out besides being male in the industry where you're at? Uh, you know what? It's it's it wasn't surprising. I kind of thought as I looked at what the other women were doing, it was very obvious that while they're very passionate about what they do and they're very good at it, mm-hmm. and there's a lot of great women here on Long Island that, that do organizing. Um, I've met a, a few of them, and quite quite uh, understandably, they don't really want to get too involved in the physical aspect. And mm-hmm. what I mean by that is that my customers have hired me partially because. You know, they want a cabinet put together, they want a shelf hung up, they want a picture put up. So it's almost quasi-handyman. Mm. So I have no issues with picking up the hammer or I'll even go out and do the show. I help them pick out the cabinets that they want. I'll even go shopping for them and, and pick wow. it up once they've, they've approved it. Uh, because, quite honestly, James, it leads to the end result of organizing. It does. <laughs> it literally you know, really does. You know, you know, I have a couple of customers where, you know, they their house isn't really messy, but they just have a, a tremendous amount of perhaps wall space or an area in the home where it just screams for something more. So I'll sit down with them and take the time. I'll come up with suggestions and recommendations of things that they could do, inexpensive you know, items they could buy that it will help them give them more square footage or whatever the case that's going to end up providing them with the solution that they're looking for. You're like a one-stop shop, and that's what I'm, I'm thinking. It's like it's, you get, they can hire – instead of hiring two people – they right. can hire you to install the cabinets or you know or the shelving and then organize it. Absolutely, agreed, one hundred percent. And that's what I've been doing. Again, a couple of them, some of them just go. Some of them have told me, just you know what, if you get me the cabinet put together, I know what I want to do. But my husband doesn't do it, or he doesn't right. have the time, or right. Right. maybe they're divorced. You know, whatever the case may be. And again, I'm providing them with that solution that leads to organizing. So I'm more than happy to offer it as part of my services. Wow, I love that. And that, yeah. that is something that I think would be unique. I mean, not saying, I mean, I know women out there could do shelving and stuff, but I guess, I guess that would mean the, the heavy lifting. That's great that you're able to provide that for people. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. You know, now, 
Have you ever been f- not taken seriously as an organizer because you're a male, or have you any anything with that, or have you been good so far? You know, that's a good question. I think the bigger challenge that I've been finding that I'm kind of I don't know if I should be surprised, but I think the bigger challenge is that um, most folks don't really truly understand the value that I'm bringing. Mm-hmm. So they, when I tell them, well, I organize, and, and a lot of times they, I get kind of that halfway dog yeah, sideways yes. head look What's on their that? face of, right. well, what exactly does that mean? Right. And I have to explain it to them, and then they, they get it. Um, the other part of it's been that I've had customers that have hired me still not quite understanding what I do until I start working with them, and mm-hmm. then it, then they, it's kind of they get the aha moment when you could look on their face and you could tell that they've looked at you and they're like, now I understand what you do, and it's like the light bulb just went off. I think that's actually um, almost basically a universal thing. Because I've talked to other organizers too, male and female. Are like, yeah, you say professional organizer, and like I said, people think I'm. Do you do rallies? You organize rallies? I'm like, not this week. I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> but no, I mean they don't. They really don't know. And like you said, and you get into it, and they're like an organizer, like it's an elective thing, kind of like well, an organizer. I mean, I I could do it myself, but like you're not doing it yourself, so well, I can really help uh, you. And that, you know what? And that's an excellent point. They always say the same thing. Well, I could do this myself. And then we start talking. I, I so sometimes I'll ask them that question. Um, you know, well, how long have this has a situation in your home been like this, or your office? And I'll get, you know, well, six months. It's been a year, three years. I'm going to get to it eventually. Well, and I said, well, no, you're not really getting it to eventually. I'll do respect. I said, but that's why I'm here. I'm unbiased. I'm not married to your stuff. I have no emotional right. attachment to exactly. it. Exactly. And my job, if you hire me, is to help mm-hmm. really kind of guide and push you through the process. You know, so you could you, we can get it done, and at the end of the day, whatever your objective is, we're going to accomplish it. That's a good point, and that you, you bring up something that's really good for people who are not in the industry. If you're if you're a potential client listening to this program, we respect your stuff. Our Absolutely, job, we're, we're not married to it. Like you said, I love that word. We're not married to it. It's not our stuff, but we do respect it. We're coming into your space, into your home, and our goal is to help you. That's correct. That's a hundred percent correct. Yeah. It's all emotionally based. Yeah, exactly. It is. Very you know, nice. and, and so that, well, and that's critical because you know the way that I, I also explain whether people or my clients or, or people just asking me, you know, how do I get involved in this and how do I start? You know, I make sure they understand right from the get go that you know I'm coming into an emotional situation. You have to understand that because if you don't gain their trust, literally within the first couple of minutes, that you're in their home or office space, you, you've lost. You know, it doesn't matter what you do or say. You're not going to get the job with that client, and you're not going to get to accomplish what you want to do with them. Now, how do you get most of your business? It's, it's been interesting. Um, I do track where my sources and referrals come from. Mm-hmm. So I, I, have, I was lucky enough that I, I actually met an interior decorator about six months ago, and yeah. she's been phenomenal with referring me and bringing me into her, cluster, her clients because Ooh. in order for her to do her job, the space has to be accessible. So... She brings me in, cleans up the area, organizes it. I, I kind of exit the this, this situation, and she comes back in, and then ah, she goes off and works with her client. I like that. The, the other major source that I've been finding, and it's been taking some time to build up, is that on Facebook yes. in particular, I'm attached to and, and um, part of a lot of mom groups. Oh. And what that allows me to do is to take things that I post on my Facebook page and then share it to these mom groups and let them see things that I'm doing. And, and, and with them, it's all very visual, so I have to put on a lot of pictures, um, not just words and explanation and text, but put some pictures behind it. And I do actually get um, leads from that as well. Wow, that's so smart. You've been doing this for a year. My goodness. Yep. That is great. So what is one thing you have learned in this last year that, that really sticks with you, your first year of business? Uh, probably one thing that I've learned. Um, don't assume that just because someone says, hey, I need to get organized and I'm going to call you, that they're actually going to follow through. That's true. There's time. It really is two key factors that I've had to learn is that it's time and patience. Yes. You know, um, I'm getting my name out there here on Long Island. You know, it's, there is, it is starting to build. The last three months have been explosive in comparison to the winter. Wow, good. Um, you know, and, and so, you know, leads are coming in. I'm getting phone calls. I'm getting emails. I'm getting inquiries. You know, hey, I want to learn about your services. So, it, you know, again, it, it's just time and patience, st- you know, staying the course. Yeah, I've learned that also because I was trying. I mentor a few um, newer organizers, and I let them know that sometimes, because it is emotional-based, they'll call you, they'll see you, you do the consultation. 
it may be three months before they call you. It may oh, be absolutely. Two months. It may be two weeks. I mean, like, you have to really just stay calm because it's not really about heavy sales. <laughs> like, you know, we come from industries where it's like sell, sell, sell. What's well, this personal? And so yes. if they want to come to you, they'll come to you. They, yep. they, will, they will come to you. You know, you know so and, I, that's, and, a, that's a great lesson to learn. And they all think the same thing. You know, you're, I, I always get the same question over and over. Oh, this must be the worst you've seen. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, I like that. <laughs> you know, I, 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 I do get one question. I don't know if this comes up with you, but this, you know, I, I've been getting this a lot from people. You know, again, regardless of whether they're a prospective client or you know, another business associate, they they all start asking the same question, which is, yeah. you know, when do I know to hire an organizer? Yeah, I get that. And, I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about answer, that on my show at some point. Yes, yeah, that's a, that's a good one. Yeah, but. Right now, my kind of my, my general answer to them because it's 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 what I found to be the truth is that the answer is different for everybody. That's true. That's true. You know, I mean, you know, we all have some percentage of clutter in our home or our office space, right. and we live with it. It's okay. Right. You know, we accept it. But I tell people, you know, what? It, it's when you get up in the morning or that day you go out and you look at it, and you go, "All right, I crossed the line. I can't take it anymore." Yeah, that's true. I'm crying uncle. Hey, Vinny, stay on the line. I'm going to have you back okay. after the commercial, so hold on. And we'll be back with Super Organized Universe Radio with Frank Moran and Vinny Giacalone. So I'm a dog, and I just got adapted by this new human guy, and I'm starting to wonder how he got along without me. I mean, okay, something as simple as walking around the block. He's got this leash thing, and he puts me on one end and him on the other, and I'm just taking him around. I, I think he's afraid of getting lost. Without that leash and me guiding him along, I don't think he'd find his way back home. But it's kind of cute. A person is the best thing to happen to a shelter pet. Be that person. Adopt. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the shelterpetproject.org. Los pollos, home of flavor down to the bone chicken. As we say in Spanish, el sabor hasta el último huesito. At Los Pollos, we serve delicious Cuban slash Mexican marinated chicken. We are cooking our chickens in rotisserie ovens to give you a well-seasoned, well-marinated, well-cooked, delicious chicken. We have three locations to serve you. In the city of Bell, we are located in 6201 Atlantic Avenue on the corner of Randolph and Atlantic. In the city of East L.A., we are located on 5161 Pomona Boulevard on the corner of Atlantic and Pomona Boulevard. And in the city of Downey, we are located on 7940 East Florence Avenue in the corner of Paramount and Florence. Come to Los Boyles and experience the most delicious chicken that you'll ever have the pleasure of eating. Super Thrive, unique extra life, transplanting, and maintenance. Impossibilities made easy. 1,860 to 75-year-old trees dug up from grounds of 20th Century Fox Studios, stockpiled in weather for two years, replanted along city streets. The landscape architect and contractor reported not one sick or dead tree at any time. Only Super Thrive could have done this or even approached it. Super Thrive, ask for it by name at your local garden center or nursery. We are back at Super Organizer Universe Radio. I'm James Law, Jr., Super Organizer, and I'm here with Frank Moran and Vinny Giacalone. So, Vinny. Vinny, are you there? I'm here. Oh, good. Okay, so I ask every question. I ask the same two questions to every guest. And so now it's your turn. <laughs> I'm on the hot seat. You're on the hot seat. Get ready. Number one, what word do you think should be eliminated from our vocabulary? Hmm. Uh, one is it one word or phrase? Give me a phrase, sure. I have to keep this. <laughs> oh, I love it! <laughs> That's so good. I love it. That's a good one. That's a good one. You're the first person of all my guests to do a phrase, and that's a great phrase. I love it. <laughs> and now, well, what word do you think we should add back into our vocabulary? Um. Or should have it add back in, or how you should you know, people should have in their vocabulary. Um. Hmm. Wow, I'm really gonna, I'm really in the hot seat here. I, know, I love it. See, I see, I see everybody. Mm-hmm. I know you got one in there, or phrase. So you have phrase as well. <laughs> yeah. Well, again, I'm I'm sorry. I'm I'm gonna keep going with the phrase. I love it. That's I, good. That's I, fine. Yeah. 
I, I think that, it's uh, due day. You can do anything you want. I, That's all right. I, I, I guess if there's something that we should we should add back in is that I, I, I honestly, James, I you know we should be a little more courteous to each other. I like that. I like. That. I agree. I always say I always say that um, I like being nice. I think nice should be the norm. Yep. I think Please, why. Thank you. Yeah. Why? I mean, why? Why is being mean so in? I don't get it. And acceptable. I like. I like being a nice person. I think nice should be norm. Should be, should be mm-hmm. normal. I like that. So you get more out of it. Yes, yes, you do. Actually, I get I get a lot out of it. So, tell people where they can find you. Well, you can find me uh, on my website, which is uh, www.theorganizedguy.biz. They can find my Facebook page, which is also the Organized Guy Inc. Or they can contact me on my cell phone. There you go, kids. And also, his, also, well, also, I have you featured on my page, too, on Super Organizer and my blog, superorganizeruniverse.com. I featured his logo and links to his, and links to his website. So you can also go there, too. We want to make sure people find you. You're a, you Thank are you. an organizer for hire yes, in Long Island. In Long Island. My people in New York. I love it. <laughs> of course. Well, Vinny, thank you for coming on the show today. Thank you for having me, James. I really appreciate it. And I'd love to have you back sometime. Absolutely. Talk some, talk some more. Absolutely. No, I'm glad we we met each other. I'm glad we hooked up. I agree. You have a great weekend and the rest of the week. You got it, James. Thanks very much, for, and have a great weekend yourself. Thank you. Bye. Did I do it? I think I did it. So, Frank, how was that? That was uh, he had a lot of great stuff, man. He, a very fascinating guy. Yeah, he's he's very he's very good. I'm definitely want to have him back on. He's he's so good. So we're gonna do some word association. Oh, all yes, right. Yes, I like word association. Yes. Okay, so we're gonna do this. So I'm gonna say a word. And you just tell me what comes to mind for you. All right. Laughter. Uh, joy. Manhood. Uh, facial hair. <laughs> Okay, so those of you who don't have facial hair, you're still a man. <laughs> That's right. It's okay. It's just it's word association. I can grow hair. Other men in my family can't grow hair. So, <clears throat> improv. I uh, oh spontaneous because you do do some. You do do. Okay, there you go. Right, you do some improv, don't you? Yes, I'm on a, a team over at IO West, uh, based in Hollywood, right there, Hollywood and uh, Coenga. Check them out, yeah. please. My sanctuary. Oh. Uh, Solitude. Mm-hmm. Superheroes. Superman. <laughs> there you go. I had a feeling you were going to say that, of course. Getting older. Fearful. Ooh, really? Interesting. Yes. And why do you say that? Uh, you know, there's just so much that I feel like, I, there, well, there's definitely much, so much I want to accomplish, and I feel like I have my own worst enemy uh, in terms of self-sabotaging myself, yeah. <laughs> and so I feel like the clock is constantly running out. Actually, I can agree with you on that one for in terms of feeling the clock. I have so much I want to accomplish also, and I changed my life at 40, as many uh, listeners know. I told the story two weeks ago. I started over again at 40, and I'm 46. I'm heading towards – like, I, I have so much I want to do. Yeah, it's just, and I feel like, uh, much like yourself, I just think it's time to just, uh, you know, do a reboot, do a hard reboot, right. because, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, it's a vicious cycle that I'm constantly in, <laughs> where it's like, I want to accomplish more, but I, sab- I sabotage myself, and so then I get in that, that cycle where yes. I'm just like, oh, time is running out, and I'm not accomplishing anything in my life, what am I doing with myself? So it's a terrible spin cycle. But it is, but you are doing stuff, he is doing stuff, and he is for hire. Yes. I'm like, I'm like get everybody jobs. You are doing stuff, and that's the whole thing, is that you're doing things, you know, little increments, you're doing stuff. And so that's good. Uh, well, discipline. That was my next one, actually, on here. <laughs> uh, a, a roadmap. Ooh, okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. I, I only say oh, oh, because I feel like uh, discipline just reminds me of uh, working out. And uh, I've uh, in my life, I've lost uh, like 150 pounds. Wow. So, Oh, uh, my God. And for that, I just associate with a roadmap. If you give me a roadmap to a destination, I can easily follow it. I'm very Ooh. disciplined that way. How many of you folks out there – Feel the same way. Very interesting. Hosting. Ah, uh, love. Yeah, I think I'm. I'm loving it now that yeah. I'm doing it. I do. I love it. Tomorrow. Hopeful. Oh, I like that. One of my, one of my words. Hope is people now. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. So we're just talking about the whole trying to get stuff done, right? Yes. Yeah, just always uh, tomorrow. You're hopeful. Just uh, another. It's another chance. Another opportunity. And that's really important, everyone out there. Is that every day that you open your eyes is a chance for a reboot. It's a chance to do something. It's a chance to organize. It's a chance to sort. It's a chance to do anything. Every day that you wake up, 
is a new chance. So now I'm going to ask you the two questions I ask every guest, of course. Love it. I think I know what there's going to be, James. Okay, because I feel like James Lipton all of a sudden. That's your <laughs> two questions. What is your favorite curse word? Just kidding. We're on a daytime show. We can't do that. Uh, what word do you think should be eliminated from our vocabulary? Well, if we're going with due day, James, yes. uh, uh, as Vinny said, uh, he's probably have to go with the phrase. Uh, I, I guess I would go with just like a, yeah, just a, a little phrase. Uh, FYI. <laughs> I, I, hate, <laughs> I can't stand that when people use it because om- almost inevitably that it's used around me, it's with a snarkiness to it where it just, it's just so good. <laughs> FYI. I'm like, oh, come on. Uh, so that one just, oh, that rankles me. Ugh. Now, for those of you living in Iraq, that means for your information. Yeah, and just, usually it is kind of a snarky thing being said to you. Like, yeah, just just tell me, just like just yeah. so you know. There's yeah, so, right, so much right. more innocent. Here's F-Y-I. the deal. <laughs> like, blah. I love it. And what word do you think we should add back into our vocabularies? Uh, you know, I'm, I, I, as I say with improv at all, uh, the end is in the beginning. Uh, I'm going to go with unifocal. Oh, my unifocal, my word, unifocal. <laughs> That's right. Oh, my God. We're going to make that a word. I don't think it is a word. So sad. I, I, I pride myself as a two-time spelling bee champion, because I am, and an English major, but I somehow I like unifocal. Let's get it in. Let's get it in, Let's folks. Get, it in. get Webster's on the phone right now. Let's get that campaign going. Go to James's Facebook page, his blog. We're pushing unifocal. I think I actually might write a blog on that or something. I don't know. <laughs> it is, that's so funny. I like bringing things back around. I'm all about that, too. I love that. It's so funny. Oh, my God. I love that. Um, so for you... Going forward, because you heard some tips today mm-hmm. and things, are you, are you thinking, I feel invigorated, I'm going to try to do my time management, I'm going to get things accomplished? Yeah, you know, I, I, yeah, it's uh, it's always a nice reminder to, to not, because it, it can be so overwhelming when you look mm-hmm. at a project like that, and just to take it into bite-sized chunks. And just approaching, basically that's how I approached uh, getting myself in shape and stuff. It's mm-hmm. just, you know, don't think about the, the end result of 150 pounds. Just no. think about those bite-sized chunks of maybe a pound or two a week. And just think about it in those terms. And then eventually at the end of it, boom, you've lost uh, whatever amount of weight you like to lose. That is such smart advice, actually. Um, and I'll relate that to organizing again. Just break it down. Break it down to pieces and just handle each piece. And don't worry about it. In the end, yeah, you want to have a goal, of course. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I want to have, I want to be 150 pounds lighter, or I want to be lighter, or I want to be skinnier, or I want a cleaner room. But don't focus much on the end. Just kind of focus on the actual journey getting there. No, it is. I think it's, it's easier. Yeah. And less pressure, kind of, too, I think. Absolutely. You're not, yeah. kicking, your, you're, you're not kicking yourself for something like that. You don't have to worry, oh, I didn't lose you know, 150 right. pounds like, this week. No, just like, I cleaned the corner. I cleaned right. the corner. <laughs> right, right, let's celebrate. I cleaned off that bed. I was going to the bed. I cleaned off that side of the bed. I can lay on both sides now. Exactly. There's more opportunities to celebrate. Yes. <laughs> if you do it, break it down a little bit, you're always celebrating these little accomplishments. Look at that. No, actually, no, that's true. No, that's true, too. And, I always, and my, my grandmother used to always say that every paycheck you get, Take a little tiny bit for yourself and spend it on something you like. Yeah. But it's a little tiny bit. Not everything, but just a little bit for yourself each time. Life should be about celebrating. So, Frank, where can folks find you? Uh, you could find me uh, on Facebook uh, at uh, Frank Moran there. Look at that. Delightful. <laughs> or uh, Check me out, guys. Uh, you'll you find my, my, my pictures, the one with the, um, with the gentleman in a TARDIS, a replica. Yeah, I, I think I, I saw that. Yes. I mean, I'm a huge Doctor Whovian, so that go. just that made me very happy. Uh, I play over at uh, do Improv over at Improv Olympic over there in Hollywood and Cahuenga. I play uh, every other Tuesday night with the team called Max. 9.30s, Tuesday nights. They're fantastic. Uh, delightful people. I'm honored to be with them. And then every other Saturday night with another team called Doctor Who Live, where we do improvised Doctor yeah, I Who. I have to come. I saw that. I need to come. Absolutely. James, you've got a standing invite anytime Thank you, you okay. want. Yes, you were right there. I need, I need. I mean, seriously, I need to. I need to be there. Yes, because I, I saw that on your. And I'm like, oh my god, I need to get over there. So I will definitely come. Hey, and you, uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Happy Go Jackie, which I love that. I love that Twitter handle. <laughs> <It's just> like, <laughs> where'd you come up with that? That was actually based off of an old uh, SNL skit that Ray Romano did, where he's playing a color oh. commentator doing ESPN. Uh, he's calling a color commentating for a basketball game, <laughs> and he just used coming up with ridiculous phrases. Yeah, and he just said, he goes, "Happy Go Jackie on the white guy like a donkey eating a waffle." <laughs> And that, that whole expression just always stuck with me. And I was like, oh, I love it. Uh, well, thank you for being on the show, Frank. James, thanks for having me. It was fantastic. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And everybody out there, you can find me on a lot of social media. But specifically, you can find me on Twitter at the Super O or Black Hope LA. And that's B-L-A-K-H-O-P-E-L-A. I couldn't afford the C. You can also find me on Facebook, forward slash The Super Organizer. My blog the superorganizeruniverse.com where all things come from. And then, of course, the granddaddy, 
of all of them, the Super Organizer, uni- that's wait, you SuperOrganizer.com, SuperOrganizerUniverse.com. They're all there for you. And you can also follow me on After Buzz TV. I do the Dish and Day show on Sundays. And I'm also doing a interview show this next Wednesday on the 24th at 5 p.m. Thank you so much for listening. I appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Frank. Thank you, Vinny Giacalone, for coming on from New York. Next week, I'll be back. Same time, 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Have a great week. Welcome back to Science Today. And the next caller is nine-year-old Philip. Hi. Well, I know the molecular formula for glucose, C6H12O6. And the general formula for an alkene is CNH2N plus 2. But I can't seem to find any scientific formula for Bob. Bob? My goldfish. Are you ready for kids who eat healthy? Good nutrition can lead to great things. To find out how a healthy lifestyle can help your child succeed, go to MyPyramid.gov. Brought to you by the Ad Council and USDA.